All right, so I'm gonna show you a way to reserve whites. This photo here I took out in the Mountain Hood National Forest when I was on a hike with my daughter. And I loved the, the white of the trees back here and the fall foliage, how bright it was. And then the contrasting colors of the foreground trees really caught my eye. So I actually uh, messed with this original photo a lot and bumped up the contrast so I got a really good idea of where those dark trees in the foreground were. But I want to show you how I would preserve those white trees with um, tape. And this is called Nichibon tape and it's a it's stuck to my finger, but it's a architect tape. I got this on Amazon and I actually got the idea from a fellow artist and I've loved it. So I'm just going to cut off a strip here and lay it down where I want my tree to be. And I'm just gonna cut off random thin strips of this. Just being careful not to press too hard and damage the paper underneath. But you can tear that right up. And then I'll come right next to it and do, I'm gonna kind of not try to keep them too too, too straight. You know, I want to add a little interest. So I'm going to do another one over here, but this time I'm going to keep it thinner. Come down. All the way to the bottom. And then I'm going to remove that. And I think just over here I want to do three, so again, just really random. Random spacing and random thicknesses to keep it interesting. And then coming over here. A little bit thinner. And I'm going to do an odd number, an off number. I don't want to have even numbers. It keeps it more interesting if you're a little off, if you're a little odd. And so hopefully that makes me interesting because I am definitely a little odd. <laughs> don't tell anybody. Okay, so there basically are my trees. I could um, either do this with liquid frisket, which I don't have up here in my studio right now, but just add a little branch here. Let's see if that worked. Oops, nope, taking that other piece up. So that can be my branch coming across. Not as easy as frisket. I'm going to put that out there right away. I found the frisket was a little bit easier than this. But I wanted to try it like this too, just to see, experiment with it. Like I said, this is Nichibon. It's an architect tape. I found it on Amazon. But you could use just regular uh, masking tape too, your artist tape that you use to tape your um, paper 
to the board here like that. And I'm just going to come up and do a random branch there. These are a little too stiff for me. I feel like they should be a little bit more um, irregular looking. So let's see what happens here. And then I can use this other little piece to put somewhere else. How about right here? Again, I'm being really careful not to dig into this paper. This is Arches of 140. And the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing is because I want to paint this background without having to worry about um, painting around these trees. I want to I want to preserve the white of them. And it's really hard, especially with the size that these trunks are, to um, to paint around them. It's not impossible, but it's a lot harder. So, okay, so that is uh, what I'm doing to begin this painting: is Nietzsche bond tape and putting in my tree trunks, and then I'm gonna get going here on this as soon as I get my finger unstuck from the tape. And I've chosen a couple of colors here. I've got a Winsor & Newton Opera Rose. I've got a Daniel Smith Bismuth Yellow. And I've got a Holbein Leaf Green that I'm going to use for the background to start with. And I'll probably add in some darker um, values in this first wash down here with um, probably hooker's green, maybe sap green, and some, um, maybe some of that uh, opera rose, maybe a darker. Let's just see what happens here, but I'm gonna go ahead and just actually go with a wet and wet application drop in those colors. They're going to flow really freely. I've got really wet, shiny paper. And what, what happens when you've got either um, liquid frisket or tape like I've got here is the paint and water are going to kind of separate. So I'm going to be aware of that as I'm putting the paint down. I've got my paper nice and wet. And I want to get an, a folly, fall color kind of orange there. I want it to keep it bright. And I have to admit here, I have not used bismuth yellow before, but I'm trying it out to see how I like it. So I'm gonna make up a little puddle over here of that. And keeping some of my Opera Rose pure. And then getting a nice juicy mixture of this leaf green. This really seems to be what I see here. And I'm just going to drop in some of these colors while the paper's nice and wet. And actually, I want to keep that area a little bit lighter. And watching how they flow on the paper is beautiful. So even this Opera Rose next to the Bismuth yellow, it's going to give you a, a beautiful look there. So let's see. I might not have mixed up quite enough. 
So I'm going to come down here with a little more of that orange. And now I do think this hooker's green, and I'm going to go with the opera rose, maybe a little bit more green. And I think I'll add some leaf green into that too. So I, w I wouldn't want to go um, mix up any more than about three colors because I'm trying to keep it fresh. And you can tend to get pretty muddy if you mix up too many colors together. So. Don't want to do that. A little splashing. And you see what I'm talking about here is the paint has is settling. So if I move this around a little bit, I can get it flowing. I think I want to splatter in some of this yellow. I'm already seeing some granulating happening here with the opera rose. Splatter some more. I really forgot that I want to keep this a little bit lighter, so I'm going to blot out a little of that paint color so we keep that area nice and bright like it is here and I can also come in with my brush and soak up some of that color a little more green up there like that color. It's really a nice, bright, sunny green. See, I'm getting some puddling here, so I want to be aware of that because what's going to happen is the uh, upper parts here that are on top are going to dry, and then I've got the little valleys with the puddles, and the puddle of water will push back up into that um, dry area. and cause a little bit of a blossom that I may or may not like. So in this early stage, I wanna keep an eye on that and determine whether or not I want it. So now I'm gonna splatter in a little bit more of that green, liking that. A little bit down here. This brush is really good for that. All right, and I can also come along the edge here and just soak up some of that excess. And Moving the board around a little bit can help disperse that color. Kind of referred to this as a point where you kind of have to babysit it a little bit. And that's okay, you know? So I'm liking the colors in here and I'm gonna babysit it a little bit more and then we'll come back and take the, probably take the tape off after this is completely dried and see what we can do with the next stage. All right, so this has had a chance to dry and my goodness, it is bright. Um, 
But I have to say, if your painting's too bright to start with, it's actually better. It can be toned down, but if it's dull to start with, it's gonna be that way all along. So starting bright isn't a bad thing. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be adding these uh, layers of darker colors over this. So these, this first layer is gonna shine through those and hopefully give me this real beautiful translucent, translucent glowing color that is behind all those trees in the foreground. Um, so it is okay that it's too bright. I'm going to now um, take off this tape and I'm not going to use that brush. It's too big, but I'm going to mix up a, um, a color, a grayed down color for these darker places in the tree trunk. And then I'll go over um, with the layers the successive layers. This is the fun part, actually. Taking this tape off is kind of satisfying. Right now, I wanna just focus on getting the shadows in these trees. So I'm gonna get a small brush. I think what I'll do is go with this number two long round from Princeton and start with burnt sienna. Burnt sienna mixed with either uh, ultramarine blue or cobalt blue. It uh, makes a really nice gray. And tree trunks, especially these, these are white, but people tend in the beginning, in their early stages of learning to paint, they wanna paint their tree trunks brown and you really don't see that too much out there. You see more gray or um, grayed down brown. You don't, you rarely see a brown. So what I've got here is um, my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna ready to go. And then I do like to, to drop in other colors into that shadow. It makes it interesting so i'm going to stick i'm going to bring in some manganese violet get that ready to go and i can drop it in when the paint's still wet and a little burnt or not burnt sienna um alizarin crimson ready to go and i'm just going to start doing it kind of drag my brush and then add some water here as I go. And this is the point where I can come in and drop in some other color. And you may not be able to see it super well on the video, but and red's gonna be really strong. Um, but it does add interest. And there's a little cobalt blue added in there too. So I can just keep coming down with that and don't make it solid. I'm not gonna make it solid. That would defeat the purpose of looking at like a white birch tree that it is out here. A little bit of purple in there. And I'm gonna come all the way down. It's gonna be basically covered with some dark brush foliage in there. So I'm gonna leave some of it just white because I will come back over the top of that and some blue just dropping in those colors it's going to help darken it up too I think we need to add a little bit more down here a little darker it lightens up as it dries so Continue my way up here, and I hope you can see how the bristles of the brush drag along the peaks of this paper, which I said earlier was a uh, Arches, I think I said Arches Cold Press Rough 140. And coming up here, 
just a couple little spots. Because again, that's going to be covered with branches, darker branches. Softening some of those edges. Some of them I like to leave a little crisper because it just makes it more interesting. A little darker here. Probably should have started with that one because my hand, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to drag. If I come over here and then try to paint this, if I paint these first, I'm going to get my hand in the wet paint. So I'm going to come over to this smaller one and... Some of this one's going to be maybe just a little more solid. And adding some blue, cobalt blue, into that. And also, as I'm looking at the coloring in here, you can um, maybe see it's a little more orangey on the bottom tree trunk. So I'm going to grab a little permanent orange and add that into my mixture here. Give it the look that it's kind of glowing from all the trees or uh, shrub foliage around it. And that's what we need to remember that white is gonna reflect Color bounces off other objects, so the the tree is um, reflecting the orange foliage in the background, which is cool. And I just kind of spread that out a little bit to make it look like a branch coming off, maybe. And a little bit of blue in there. A little bit of, oops, that's a little too much. Soak some of that up with my brush. Put some blue over the top of it. Kind of tone it down a little bit. All right. And now keep coming up. And again, some of it can be a little bit more solid we're coming up here into the tree area. I've got a little fuzz on there. There we go. Sometimes you get those and if your paint is in just the wrong area of drying, you can pick it up with your brush and, and leave some marks that you don't want. So rather get it off there when I saw it. All right, I'm gonna let that dry and then come back and do some very bold brush strokes to get this um, foliage in the foreground. That's, um, getting, it's a little bit tricky, but you gotta just kinda take the bull by the horns and do it. And we'll talk about how to paint foliage when we come back after this is dry. So I'm gonna to wanna to have a couple of different greens mixed up here. And I think I'm gonna start with sap green and I want to get a fairly dark mixture for some of this, but then there's kind of some mid-tones in there too that aren't quite this bright. So I think right here next to my sap is this yellow ochre, which will give kind of an opaque look to it. I'm gonna tone that down a little bit too, so. Then for my dark, dark, um, I'll go with hookers green and add a little, the, they're in the foreground, so I'm thinking a warmer 
shade of green, a warmer dark green, which would make me think of putting the complement of green, which is red, and I'm going with um, alizarin. And I've got a nice dark green there. And I think I also want to add a little bit of this burnt orange to it. Gives it a nice foresty color. And some of these are um, those evergreen, I'm not sure what that is, hemlock or dug, dug fir. I don't think it's dug fir. There's hemlock out there in the forest. So that's pretty good dark. I just want to have, have enough and here we go. That almost is looking a little too bright so I'm going to add just a touch of that alizarin in there as well. Tone that down a bit. All right, here we go. This is really just random strokes. I think I'll get some of that leaf green ready to go as well. On the chance that I'll probably want to drop in some of that. So just right over the top of my birch and then down here in the corner I'm going to add darker a little darker down there but having both of these mixed up and ready to go is important because I want to be fresh and fast and not have to stop and mix up my paint. Whoops, soak it up with my paper towel. And there's that leaf green just kind of dropping a couple of spots in there. And coming back up here, I don't want to come too far in, so this might be just a little bit too much, but I won't really know until I blow it, and then I'll know. <laughs> Oops. And then I just blew it right there by adding my sap green to my hooker's green pile. And where I thought I had plenty mixed up, I did not. So I had to go back in and mix up some more. And here we've got our evergreen tree, whatever that is. There's my sap green with a little bit of alizarin in it. I'm just going to drop in a couple of little dabs of that. Come up here. And then on this side, I've got my branches hanging down over the top. I think I want that darker. So I'm gonna grab a little, actually, I believe that's um, neutral tint. I'm just gonna darken it up a little bit with that. And add some over here. I don't see those same trees over here, but doesn't mean I can't put them there. Envision them being there. And a little bit of brown in there, which is my burnt orange. Kind of 
kind of help naturalize that. And then even a little tree trunk in there. It's important to put the foliage in um, in the direction that it's growing. So keep that in your notebook, your how-to notebook. A lot of times I see people doing very straight brush strokes for, you know, like grass or something like that. And it just, it doesn't look very natural because that's not how the grass grows. So if you just keep in mind that you want to put those strokes in, in the direction that the actual plant grows, it's going to be very helpful. And I think I'm going to add a little Um, I put a little ultramarine into my mix. Kind of hitting that danger zone of maybe overworking this. Doing too much. And again, then I just go back and paint it again. A little more blue in that brown. And I've got my leaf green that I just added Indian yellow to. And I'm just going to pop in a little bit of splatter here. See if that helps my painting that seems to be kind of going way off course. Maybe even a little of the bismuth mixture here. Splatter that in. Very dirty water. Clean up some of that. With those colors that are in the dry area, they're not spreading. But what I can do is come in here, I've got this, it's a fine mist water sprayer. I can't pronounce that brown. A-T-E-L-I-E-R at Atelier. And let that mist help those droplets spread out a little bit. And then I can tip it around and give it some flow and see what happens as a result of that. I'm glad I have some extra water buckets because that sure is getting dirty. And I think I've pretty much done enough on this. Except I think I do want to add just some, not even with that brush, I need to go smaller. I need to go back to this little rigger, number one, and just pop in some branches here and there. Like how that squiggled, it was pretty.
this is pretty thick paint that I'm putting down um, from my brush. That is pretty puddly up there, so I'm going to move it around a little bit. And then come back in here. thinking what to do and trying to make sure I don't overdo because there's definitely a good chance of that happening. So I'm going to stop it at that and uh, take a look at it after it dries. See what, what else I could do. Or maybe I want to keep it. Maybe I want to scrap it. Maybe I want to try it five more times. Every time's different. And I learn something each and every time I paint a scene. So I'm going to let this dry. Let's maybe soak up a little bit of that. Give it some different direction. different brush might make it different. Okay, I'm gonna leave it alone and come back and see what happens. All right, so having set this aside for a few days and then coming back with the fresh eye, I have to say I like what I see. I thought I might wanna do some additional work to it, but I think I'm just gonna leave it as is. I feel like it's fresh and I don't wanna overwork it. I was a little worried about some of the uh, darker foliage being overworked. Um, I'm glad I stopped when I did because I feel like I avoided that. And also in the beginning, the very first layer that I painted, which this was this background color, all those bright colors back there, I said something like, oh, it's too bright. Um, but I knew too that these additional colors were gonna to tone that down a bit, so I'd rather have it too bright in the beginning than too dull and then have to try to figure out if there was a way to brighten it back up again. But I feel like this accomplished what I, but what I wanted it to, which was these birch trees that were contrasting with this dark foliage and the bright, beautiful fall colors that were glowing from the background. So I really feel like I, I accomplished that and so I'm happy with this painting. So hopefully you enjoyed this um, video and you learned something new that you can experiment with. And like I said, I used Nichibon tape. You can use masking tape, artist tape like this and just cut it into strips. Um, just making sure that the edges are nice and uh, sealed so the paint doesn't seep underneath. And I'll leave a, a note in the description about the size of this and the name again, so you can um, search for it if you'd like to try it. But basically that's um, one way of saving white, whites and um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I hope that you would subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.